What makes a good uh, global citizenship resource is one which is practical and up to date. Something they feel comfortable working with and enjoy working with. For e-resources are the best resources, I'd be looking for a resource which had um, kinesthetic activities. Images are always good. Fairly resilient and hard wearing, easily updated, particularly in terms of statistics. Um, something to fire my imagination and the students. The reason I'm recommending the RISC How Do We Know It's Working resource is because it's one of the best resources I've seen that enables you to actually judge how well your global citizenship has been working. Um, there's lots of different ideas in here to do that and I particularly like the way that they draw on formative assessment pedagogies. What it is, it's got a range of different activities looking at different topics um, which enable you to make some sort of a judgement about how well the kids have understood what it is that you were covering. So there's things like quite kinesthetic things, looking at pictures, discussing what they show, putting them into groups, and you can see them visually. So you don't have to sit down and go through a hundred different questionnaires afterwards. It also shows you how to analyse the results to try and draw out some of the more interesting aspects of what you might be trying to test. So one of the particular ways of assessment um, which I've used is to actually use a set of cups you give kids questions which you want to find out their answers to. Each question has got a cup next to it. You give kids a bunch of seeds and then you tell them they've got, say, three seeds and they've got to decide which cups they're going to put them in. Within an hour, I use that to assess um, what an entire year group actually felt about a set of work which we'd done, just by going around and counting up the number of seeds in different cups. I've used this resource with secondary kids, um, age sort of year seven, year eight, year nine, they're quite generic activities, so I would say that you could use them with anybody. I think at £19.95, this is potentially one of the best uses of £20 that you could have in a school. I think there's lots of activities in there that you could use with um, transition students. So if you've got year six students coming up and you wanted to organise some activities for a collapsed timetable day. But it would also be very effective with key stage four students. I really liked how can I make the world a better place and also is this a family and I really liked when they were tackling families from different backgrounds, meeting together, talking about sexuality, all those different things which really challenging stuff. How do they feel, which is a resource within here, looks at immigration, a very hot topic um, nowadays and one which young people only see the negative aspects of and probably don't get to empathise very much. So here is a resource set up for you which would be good for citizenship or history to really understand where immigrants are coming from, how do they feel about the situation and to analyse uh, why immigrants come to Britain. One of the best activities I found that is very useful are the group activities where the students have a particular card and on that card they are encouraged to play a role and in doing so we bring in the science, we bring in the geography, we bring in the citizenship, we bring in the humanities and there's a self-assessment activity at the end of that where they can assess themselves and each other. In this book they clearly want to make sure that pupils have a commitment to social justice and equity. That's something which I would empathise with and I would like pupils to feel like that. But I don't think necessarily all teachers are going to feel comfortable with promoting that agenda. Get a CD with it which has all of the templates on it, any of the um, resources as, which are used for the starter activities, the, the question um, cards. So I actually think from the point of view that you don't have to go and buy anything extra and also uh, you don't have to really go and spend time creating anything, I do feel that it's good value for money. A sim sweatshop simulates a factory in a less developed country and the students have to make trainers. If they don't make enough trainers in the time and they might lose wages and things. The students love it and it kind of simulates what might be happening in sweatshops all over the world. For you. Thank you. For you. Thank you. For you, for you. Pop them on. 
I'm recommending the trestle masks and um, specifically the ones we've been using today are the advanced set um, but they're also multicultural masks. Keep it facing out men are well done. We've been using them to explore the idea of of refugees um, but really more importantly the just the idea of people being maybe on the fringes of society. Fantastic. The reason that the young people enjoy them so much is they're very accessible so they put them on their face and automatically they get ideas for characters so you don't have to have any great preamble you can get working straight away which in a 60 minute class is obviously very very important. Max is going to walk through our society we brought in the idea of the refugee. What does that mean? What does a refugee mean to you? And then we did a conscience alley where they looked at two sides. So they looked at how the refugee might be thinking and feeling, but using a masked actor. But also, how does society view the refugee and how does that make the refugee feel? So all the time putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. I don't know what to do. I'm alone. I can't speak any English. What am I going to do? Will anyone take me in? Does anybody care? The outlay is expensive, but you do get a really good pack with it. You get loads of lesson ideas, and um, if they're well looked after, I think they're a great investment. I mean, they last better than textbooks. Oh, wow. Advanced mask set. Here we go. And here are some masks. It's a bit scary. Well, I'll tell you something. These kind of masks would be excellent in drama type activities. I think they're really good. I really do. But they all seem to be male and they're all at a certain age. There's no kind of difference between age groups. You could get people who are of different cultures playing an opposite culture and that kind of thing always helps the students understand one another. I think the children would enjoy it, I think it might be a difficult activity to manage but okay if you had the right guidelines or a good structure to the lesson. A lot of um, understanding global citizenship is about empathising and putting yourself in other people's shoes and sometimes you can't really do that unless you can physically put yourself in their shoes. Well, okay. There are some particular ones that look very sad. Now, why is that? Is that a poverty issue? Is that a crime issue? That will generate a lot of discussion with students. Too much money. I think you would be hard pushed to find a school department that could justify spending that much on masks. If you're bringing art and design into your lessons, maybe you might want to get the pupils to make their own masks. That'd be more meaningful. I think if you were a citizenship teacher, you could find a lot of different uses for these. Uh, obviously using it within issues within the UK as well as globally. But £190 is quite a lot of money. On the other hand, they're very robust. Excellent for role play. Not so good for written work, but you could use these at any key stage. I've been using the Fair Trade Foundation website. Um, it has really good links to development and global citizenship. It gives you access to downloadable film clips, video clips about fair trade, so fair trade bananas in the Dominican Republic was a really useful thing that I used. The website I'm recommending today is the British Council website, and in particular, the Global Gateway aspect of it. Within the Global Gateway, it's these four portals. The first one is actually for opportunities for teachers, encouraging them to be a part of the global citizenship. What this does is it has links to CPD programmes so that you can study abroad. This second portal it's very useful for when you're doing your Ofsted and the DCSF recommend this particular portal as part of the resources for producing a really good CEF. The third portal is projects. It gives you ideas, 
it tells you how other teachers have already done them and they also have comments and the final one are the quick projects so there are pictures that you can download there are ideas there are notes that you can download if you've only got a short amount of time or you want something particular then you can go in there and you've got your lesson planned the thing that I like about it is the different ideas, the projects, the fact that it's this one-stop website as well is very useful. It's fascinating and interesting to hear the perspective from different countries. So you will have different countries case studies, not just British case studies. The website is updated very regularly. It keeps in touch with all the latest initiatives, but also new case studies are put on the website very frequently and the older ones are still kept there and that's very very useful as well and because of the fact that it's free it's a brilliant website it really is very good and I really think it's worth looking at. The Global Gateway website is a fantastic resource. There's obviously a huge amount of work has gone into it and people who are very committed but also who know how to set up a website which you can use very practically. I think the thing that's probably useful for staff in school, there's a very good calendar where you could look at all the activities for um, putting global citizenship into the school curriculum. There's a really good bit on the website about mini projects and activities you could build into starters and plenaries. Um, often they used external web links. For example, I looked at um, a link to the BBC website, which is about comparing two cities. There's a, a huge, bewildering array of things that you can do and so you really need to go in there knowing what you want. And then possibly, like with an encyclopedia, you find other little bits of information along the way. But if you go in there without any knowledge of what you want, then you will be completely lost. Communication with partner schools um, through the internet is quite difficult. But on the project section of the Global Gateway, there's actually a whole section in there about communication. And there's a very, very good spreadsheet which shows you about eight or nine different ways that you could do that, different websites you can use. There's also information where you can get grants so that you can actually um, take students or teachers abroad and actually investigate some of the global dimensions. But I'm very interested in these seminars. I really, I'm going to follow those through. It feels very ambitious to, uh, to start up a school, a link with a partner school, but on the other hand, there are schools there who are doing it. On balance, I'd say that Anyone who's doing this sort of work should really look at this resource.